Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we are out at my off-grid cabin in rural Wisconsin, which also happens to be a former tourist monorail from the Minnesota Zoo. We picked this up a few years ago when the Minnesota Zoo shut down their monorail ride, and they sold off the cars. I ended up buying an entire six-car monorail train, moving it out to my friend's property at Sandland. The idea here is that we were too lazy to set up a tent every time we came out to camp for a weekend, but we were also too lazy to build a real cabin. So we bought a monorail instead. We're out here today to do some upgrades to the electrical system on the monorail. Sandland does not have city power, which is why we can't drive the monorail around. This thing ran on 480 volt three phase, which is far out of my price range. We don't even have 120 volt out here. So the monorail is all solar powered. It is all 12 volt internal batteries and low voltage wiring for things like lights, charging phones, running radios, other off-grid power needs. And today we're giving that system a little bit of a refresh. This video is sponsored by Viver, who sent me the equipment that we're going to be using today. And I've used them before, and I actually do like their equipment, not just because they gave me free stuff, but because it is actually pretty decent quality for the price. And I try to do a very fair and unbiased review. Anytime I get stuff like this for a sponsorship, I try to give you the full scoop. If I like it, if I don't like it, and I'll give you any of the upsides and the downsides. It's getting a little windy out here, so the video might be getting noisy. Well, let's cut back to the house for a moment where I did a quick unboxing of the Viver stuff and then we'll jump back here to Sandland and go inside the monorail to set it up. So we're doing a quick unboxing on the Viver stuff that I got and this is another one that was shipped with FedEx and unfortunately every time I get a FedEx package it looks like this. There's just holes and like stab marks and everything so I'm really hoping that the solar panel is okay. So first off we have this big inverter. This is a pure sine wave inverter which is always nice if you're doing anything with sensitive electronics. You don't want to cheap out on an inverter that gives you a square output wave because that can damage stuff. And this is a 3500 watt continuous output inverter so it has a pretty high power rating. So we have some regular AC outputs on the front, a hardwired AC connection, we've got a USB connection and a remote connection as well as a little multifunction display here. And this is our remote unit which I don't quite know what's on here there's like I think this is just cardboard dust from the box being a little beat up in transit we've got an extension cable for that remote we have some wires to go to the battery and some extra automotive style fuses it does come with a little manual and this one has some somewhat questionable translations in it um, Viver usually has pretty decent manuals but there's always a little bit of weird translation on imported products like this it's mostly understandable Next up we have the solar panel, and I am really hoping this is in good shape because it has just taken a beating in transit. So this seems to be packed decently well, it's got plenty of padding on it. The solar panel seems to be in good condition. Now just right out of the box, just handling this, it seems really well made. I've checked out a few folding solar panels like this, and some of them are very flimsy. Some of them are not made to this quality of construction. They feel like they might break if you pack them in the car and you pack too much stuff around them. This one, it feels like you could throw this in your car, you could throw stuff on top of it, and it would probably be fine. Now, I don't actually recommend that, but it seems like it is built to be a little more rugged than some of the competing solar panels I've experienced. Now, that does make it a little bit heavier, but if you're car camping or if you're using this on a boat or something, it doesn't really matter too much. It doesn't necessarily need to be lightweight enough to go backpacking, and a panel this big, you probably wouldn't use it for that anyway. As with a lot of portable solar panels like this, it does have little feet that pop out and let you set it up at a 45 degree angle. So we have the built-in charge controller, we have DC barrel jack out, USB-C out, which is a little bit unique. I have not seen that on every other solar panel. And then we've got regular old USB-A as well. We have a single accessory cable and this has the barrel jacks. We have a long one here with male ends and then a shorter female to female adapter. So you can kind of go either way with whatever your equipment uses for a DC connection. We also have a manual, very straightforward. There's not a lot to know about this. It's a solar panel. You aim it at the sun, you plug it in, don't get water on the charge controller piece, and you're pretty much ready to go. Now I asked Viver to send me a whole kit with a solar panel, a battery, and an inverter. And this is the battery they sent me. Uh, the package here is also a little beat up. It weighs almost 120 pounds, so this is not an easy battery to manipulate. I think they may have dropped this box a few times. A lot of the styrofoam is shattered in here. Yeah, this has definitely been dropped, I think, multiple times. It has impact damage on this corner 
and um, there's some damage down here as well. Now the actual casing doesn't seem to be cracked and it's not leaking anything, so hopefully the battery itself is okay. Some of these will have some kind of fragile plates inside and if those plates get shocked or smashed too much, they can touch and they can short out and maybe reduce the efficiency of the battery a little bit. But unless it's actually been dropped enough to crack it open, I think it's probably okay. Now this is just another reason to avoid low cost shippers if you're buying something like this. You don't want a shipper who's going to drop your 120 pound battery on the corner. So my advice to Beaver would be to offer multiple shipping options for their products. And my advice to consumers out there is do not choose the cheapest shipping. You'll probably regret it. Now you'll note this is not one of those newfangled lithium iron phosphate whatever batteries. This is traditional old lead acid or gel sealed. So maybe not super traditional, but it's a lead acid battery. And that's why it weighs 120 pounds because this is slightly older technology. It is a reliable technology and it is a proven technology. I grew up in Alaska with a battery bank of batteries similar to this in size and weight powering the whole house. So now that we're back out at Sandland, we have to get all that heavy stuff up to the monorail somehow. Um, I did bring out a little hand truck or hand cart so Hopefully I can get it up the hill. It's a slight hill, but it's still a hill to get to the monorail. And the whole parking lot here is super muddy, so I'm gonna try not to get the thing stuck. Remember kids, lift with your knees. So these lead acid batteries do still have some advantages over the newfangled lithium ion, especially charging below zero. But if you're in an off-grid situation, if you're up on top of a mountain or out in the woods or out on an island, just keep in mind, every one of these is 100 pounds. So each monorail car is very similar. It's got uh, several of these seats built in and then the front car has the driver's cab. So that's through the little tiny door. And that is where we'll be setting up most of the equipment today. You'll have to excuse the mess in here. We have a million projects going on and there's just stuff kind of piled everywhere. The driver's cab is a little bit confined, so again, please excuse the funny camera angles and weird echoes. We'll do the best we can with the camera in the corner to show you what's going on in here. So my existing power setup consists of that older 40 watt solar panel up on the roof. That comes down to a charge controller here. And then we've got kind of a boat fuse panel to distribute the power out, turn on and off different circuits like the lights, CB radios, things like that. And the monorail does actually have a spot for a battery to live. Even though it was a 480 volt powered monorail and it did have internal uh, 120 volt circuits, it did have a backup battery for when it was off of the main track when they needed to run equipment disconnected from power. If there was a power outage, they would still want to be able to operate the intercom system, operate the radios, things like that. So down here, there is a little home for a battery. And currently, I just have an old car battery down there, which doesn't work very well. These tend to die after a while. They're not designed for uh, a solar panel system. A car battery is supposed to be for starting power, high cranking amps, and is not supposed to be for continuous lower draw and lower charging like a solar panel and off-grid system would provide. You really want a deep cycle battery for something like that. So our old crusty starting battery from 2017 is out of here. And our new and improved Viver battery is in. At least it will be if I can fit it into the spot here. Um, this space is big enough, it's just a little bit cramped to get it around the corner behind this door, so it'll take some fiddling. Yes, the sun angle is all funny, but at least with it being dark back here, you can't see how much messy styrofoam the raccoons chewed up. We have them mostly fenced out, but they used to get up in here and just chew all the insulation out from under the train. All right, that's kind of a tight fit, but it does fit, so I'm pretty happy about that. It's not going to take up any extra space. It just lives back in here where the battery was designed to live, where all the wiring goes, so that is a perfect spot for this battery. Now, I did not ask Viver for a charge controller with this package because I already have this one installed in the monorail. It's hard to see in the daytime, but I do have lights in both of the front cars, LED light strips inside of these fixtures. These used to be fluorescent, but LEDs are much more efficient. They are all stuck in disco mode right now, and I can't find the remote controller to turn them into normal mode. So I guess we'll just have to enjoy the uh, color combinations. 
Also my hair, I was riding a bike earlier and I have helmet hair, sorry about that. They're flickering away in there in disco mode, so the lights are drawing anywhere between uh, 2.5 and 3 amps, and it's just bouncing all over the place based on what color combinations are going. But our input is around 4.2 amps, so we are definitely keeping up with the lights and in fact putting more power into the batteries than we're using at the moment. So that was with the existing 40 watt panel that's up here. Let's see what happens when we swap out for the Viver panel. Now again, this one is larger. This is 120 watts, so I would definitely expect us to be getting more power. This thing is actually um, lighter than the other one. I remember how heavy that was when I put it in. So this is lighter weight and it does fold out like I showed back at home, so it's physically larger once it's unfolded, but when it's folded up like this, it's actually smaller than the existing 40 watt panel. And with these mounting holes here, it's actually pretty convenient. We could just drape it over the top of the monorail and tie it down if we didn't want to put it on a permanent mount. And that's kind of nice for bringing it in out of the weather if there's severe weather happening. We don't have to worry about hail, we don't have to worry about branches falling on it. We can just take the bungee cords off and store it inside under cover. So just for comparison, this is the Viver panel flat on the roof, not even aimed at the sun. The 40 watt panel, the old one, is at a 45 degree angle, and the Viver panel is just straight flat on the roof. It is already making about 7 amps. That's pretty cool. That means we don't even have to position the Viver panel pointed at the sun. We can just throw it flat on the ground, flat on the roof. Now we can't forget the other piece of this. Viver also sent me this inverter, which I would like to live in the same compartment as the battery. We'll have to see if there's space for it in there. Now we have never had AC power here at the monorail. It's always been just 12 volt DC. There's actually quite a bit of space in the battery compartment. If we slide this other side open, I think the inverter can live right there. The monorail actually has some 110, 120 wires running through it, but I probably won't use those old wires because the raccoons have chewed on them. They're all from the 1970s. Um, well, basically, if we just need to run AC power, we'll do it either here in the cab or we will run some new wires. All right, we have our inverter hooked up and in place. Sounds like it's working. So we have our main display here that tells me how much juice is coming in and out of the system. My little power area even has a perfect blank spot for the uh, inverter remote to go. I didn't plan that, but it worked out perfectly. By the way, these are the original power pickups for the monorail, so these little uh, arms would slide underneath the monorail track. These would also have communications going through them, so it would not only be power, but it was also the analog computer system that ran the monorail, because this whole thing was automated. This was a computer-controlled, analog computer-controlled monorail system with three trains, and um, yeah, everything would run through these pickups. So I've got a couple of the old uh, pickups here in storage. I said we don't have AC power here at the monorail, and even this generator that you might have noticed in a background shot does not have working AC because the inverter system in this is shot. So I just keep this around to charge batteries, and in fact, I almost never use it. So it's probably all seized up now. This was another free save it for parts thing. So uh, at some point, maybe we'll work on it. But with this much solar power, probably don't need the generator. So here we are with the Viver panel set up correctly, making about eight amps with it actually aimed at the sun the way it's supposed to be. I don't think we have to worry about angling this at all. I was considering building a better support for it so it could stay at a 45 degree angle year round. But it really doesn't seem to matter. It's still early spring here. We're not even at peak solar season, and it's still making just an amp of difference between laying flat and sitting up at the 45 degree angle. So laying it flat is much easier, and we can actually just pull it down when we're not using it. So I think we're just going to leave the Viver panels as the temporary solar solution. I'll keep the 40 watt panel up here and that can be kind of the trickle charge when we're not out here. And then if we need extra power when we're actually out here, when we're using the lights, when we're using the inverter, we can take the Viver panel, pop it onto the roof, or even just lay it out on the deck here and charge up that battery even faster. Keeping the Viver panel portable like this also makes it more flexible. So I can not only throw it on the roof of the monorail and hook it up to the existing solar panel system, I can also charge other batteries. If uh, I have some alligator clips, I could charge up our car battery here. We have a bunch of 12 volt battery systems just all over Sandland. So it's really nice to have a portable, relatively high power solar panel like this that we can quickly charge all of our 12 volt batteries just as needed. Especially for stuff down at the dig site, which is almost always shaded. I have a couple 12 volt systems down there with their own solar panels, but they never get enough sunlight to stay charged. So I am constantly pulling those 12 volt batteries out, charging them at home, charging them somewhere else. 
now that we have this Viver system, I can bring the batteries up here, or I could bring this panel down to the dig site, and it's bigger than the panels I have down there, set it up in a nice sunny area, I can move it around as the sun moves, as different parts of the dig site get shaded by trees, I can move around the portable panel and charge up little batteries, and that way those things will last longer. And this really is going to be a nice benefit here at the monorail, especially with that inverter. We can now power way more than just a few lights and a cell phone charger. I could put in bigger lights, we could have a big stereo system. If we hook up that PA system, we can maybe reuse some of the speakers for that throughout the monorail and have music out here. We could do things like movie night. We could do all kinds of fun stuff out here at the monorail. Now that we have more power, we have a giant deep cycle battery, which is way, way nicer than the little car battery that I was using, and we have that nice big inverter. So all of that stuff is going to be a huge improvement in our electrical usage out here at Sandland and our electrical storage here at the monorail. So thank you again to Viver for sponsoring the video and providing all that stuff. This was really cool. It's getting warm out here, even for early spring. This is a nice day, and it's probably a great day to test solar panels. So. I'm glad I came out now and did this while it was actually sunny out here because it has been kind of overcast for the last couple weeks and I've been trying to get the solar panels installed while doing a review while not waiting too long because I told Viver I would have this done by now. So thank you Viver for your patience. Um, thank you for sending me that equipment. We will be doing a bunch more stuff with this in the future. We will be doing more Sandland monorail projects and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that equipment runs long term, how it works long term, how the battery holds up to all kinds of winter and summer weather. Modern lithium batteries don't want to charge when it gets below zero. So I actually requested a big deep cycle lead acid battery from Viver versus a modern lithium battery because I want this to be pretty much self-contained off-grid. I don't want to come out and babysit it all the time and if it's charging below zero I want it to be something that can actually handle that and lead acid technology while it's older it's heavier than lithium it actually will hold up to all kinds of weather. I said I was going to be very fair and honest with the Viver solar panel equipment and so far Honestly, I have seen no downsides with it. The battery works great. It's big and heavy, but that's any deep cycle lead acid battery is gonna be big and heavy. The inverter works great. The little uh, remote control for the inverter is fantastic. That means I can put the inverter down below and I can have that little readout up next to the rest of my stuff. That is a nice feature there. The solar panel works better than I expected. It works almost as well lying flat on the roof as it does at a 45 degree angle. So that's great. That means I don't have to build any kind of special mount. I don't have to prop it up. I don't have to go up there and fiddle with the angle. I can just lay it wherever I want. I can bungee cord it down. I can attach it to the front of the monorail if I wanted it at a steep angle. I could attach it to the top of the monorail. We can put it on the deck. We can bring it around anywhere else that we need to at Sandland and it's very efficient even when it's not pointed directly at the sun, which is great. That is really nice. The panel up there, that 40 watt panel, is not as good at that because I definitely have tried that one laying flat on the roof at about this same season, this amount of sun, and it was terrible. So the Viver panel works a lot better than that older, clunkier, heavier panel up top in different orientations, and I like that a lot. If you want to buy any of those Viver products, this is not specifically a one package deal. I actually asked them for several of these products together, but you can get all those products on their website. I will put links to that down below, and uh, you can go check those out for yourself. If you want to see more of the Sandland monorail, then go back and check out some of my earlier videos. We've got more tours, we've got spring cleaning, we've got some modifications that I've done. I think I have a video where I put in some of those lights, so there are all kinds of monorail videos out there. We got the monorail before I was really doing a lot of YouTube YouTube stuff, so I don't have some of the very earliest setup and installation out here. Maybe I can try to do another video on that at some point. If you want to see more Sandland stuff, I have playlists on that, and if you like and subscribe, you'll be sure to see all of the future Sandland projects. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.